In 1900, Frank Lloyd Wright delivered a speech which was later known as The Architect at the Institute of Art in Chicago. Hello everyone and welcome to Arc Anime, an architecture space that focuses on sharing architecture theories and philosophies. We have already covered the first part of the speech in a previous video and now we will be discussing part 2 as promised. In this video, we will discuss the main ideas Frank Lloyd Wright talked about, which were regeneration of architecture, the mindset of the new architect, nature and architecture, architecture grammar and the path of the architect. The following are an excerpt from the original speech. Before we begin, make sure that you are subscribed to our channel for more content like this and now let us investigate. Architecture regeneration. The regeneration of architecture does not lie in the hands of the classist or fashion manager of the East, not of the West. America will regard it as crude. Chicago, even now, regards her country courthouse as something weak and servile. The American nation has a heart and backbone of its own and is rapidly forming a mind of its own. It is this harmony, this commercialism, that the younger architect should strive to understand and appreciate, for it is the measure of his technique. But he should strive to understand it as a master not as a huckster. He should help his lame, halt, and blind profession again to its place by respecting his art and respecting himself. That will make the householder realize if he would live in a Louis XV environment, he is but a step removed from the savage, and make it felt that architecture is not a matter of the scene painting of periods, nor a mere matter of a scene painting in any sense whatever. A poor thing, but mine own, is better stuff for men who coupled with reverence and honesty and carries the fundamental principle of harmonious independence. Architecture education. The architect should help the people to feel that architecture is a destroyer of vulgarity. Such an art only is characteristic of the better phase of commercialism itself and is true to American independence. When once Americans are taught in terms of building construction, the principle so dear to them the architect will have arrived, but his own education is a matter of the greatest concern. It is for a higher law and more freedom in his architectural school that we plead no anarchy, a deeper sense of the significance to his art of nature, mainly independence and vigorous imagination, a truer reverence for his precedent. He should learn a method of attack that cultivated in him the quality that gets an architectural proposition from the inside outward. The new architect. He should be a thinking quantity when he leaves school, with ears and eyes wide open, receptive, eager and enthusiastic, his heart wide open to beauty, whether of a specific brand or no, and a worker first, last and all the time a worker, his mind alive to opportunity, knowing the direction in which it lies, farsighted enough to undertake if it should come to him, and many such do come to all architects, courageous enough to decline it and wait for one his size. And when it came, he would make it count without making his client pay too large for a share of his education in the field. He would gain experience and strength and build up solidly, if slowly, and the respect and confidence would in time be his, that would make his personality a power for the architectural good of his country. His experience is to be gained only by solving problems. So, an architect may practice architecture extensively with a book and a precedent and die without experience, without a character. The architect and nature. The architect should be brought into contact with nature. He should be a true child of hers, in touch with her moods, discerning her principles and harmonics until his soul overflows, overflows with love of nature in the highest and his mind is stored with a technical knowledge of her forms and processes. He should move into the thick of civilization to study man and his methods in the things that are his. 
Meanwhile, he should acquire the technical skill of the mill, forge and tripod of commerce in the light of science, study the beauty of the world as created by the hand of man as his birthright and his advantage. The architecture grammar. Now, he is taught certain architectural physiology of form and color, dubbed grammar, by his professors and much foreign technique. If teaching him that minutes and modules of the architraves and cornices of one type in certain measures make Greek and of another type in combination make Roman and when they corrode each other the result is renaissance, there he is taught grammar. That way, the young student is eternally damned by the dogmas of Vignola and Vitruvius. The architect primarily should have something of his own to say or keep silence. If he has that something to say in noble form, gracious line, and living color, each expression will have a grammar of its own. Let the young student add to his wisdom the strength and wisdom of past ages. That is his advantage, but let him live his own life, nor mistake for the spirit. The architect path. The architect should know what he is to encounter in the field and be trained to meet it by men who have faced it in all its ugly significance with uncurable soul and clear vision. He should understand that to go into the field penniless with a family to support means the ultimate addition of one more craven to the ranks, unless some chance saves him or his fortitude is of the stuff that will see his wife and children suffer for ideals that may seem ridiculous and are to the mind incomprehensible. If he goes single-handed, he must be content to walk behind, to work, and wait. In the arts, every problem carries within its own solution, and the only way yet discovered to reach it is a very painstaking way. To extract its own consistent and essential beauty, which means its common sense truthfully idealized. That is the heart of the poetry that lives in architecture. That is what they should teach the young architect in the schools, beginning early. We have now reached the second and final part of this video. Make sure to check part 1, the link will be down in the description. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and we will see you in the next one.